Hello everyone, Karen Cecilia here. A little bit rested now, and um, well, I don't know how much rested because that, that goes and comes. You know, when you're tired and you get a little rest and you go do something else and you realize that you really never get no rest because you're still tired. Yeah, that kind of way. But um, I'm trusting everyone is okay and everyone is good. I am heartened to know that there was that much incident on nomination day and there was just more niceness than, than everything else. The young lady that lost one of her legs, um, that is such an unfortunate and sad situation. Um, I send out my, my, my love to our family and our friends and our community. Um, as I you know about me already, I have a queasy stomach. I don't even like talk talk about those things because it's such an unfortunate accident and um, and um, there's nothing we can do about it. But um, we're glad she's alive. You know, and I sort of little callous, but losing a leg is not as bad as losing a life. Life goes on, my darling. I hope you get to listen to, to this. But life goes on. And you thank God that you still have a life. And uh, I hope you get well soon. And, um, well, that is that is a hope. But I hope you, it's a long road to recovery and a long road to acceptance that this is going to be your new life. Because you, 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 you started out a week with two legs and you ended up with one, but um, we have to accept the realities of our of our situation when they come, and, and then we're going to take her a while for her to accept it and, and, and live with it. I trust she have a lot of family and friends around her, people that will support her and um, be there for her and, um, and, and, and get her through this tough time. All right, my dear, so you stay strong and God bless you and keep you, all right? So... I did what I usually do after nomination day. After nomination day, my modus operandi is to jump into the vehicle and go circle some places. Why do I do that? Because over the years and the decades, I have come to realize that after nomination day, the day after nomination day can give you a good indication of where people are and what nomination day was about. If it was a show, if it was enthusiastic PMP voters, if it was enthusiastic JLP voters, and it can give you an indication of um, where things are going. The crowds were huge on nomination day. I've now had a chance to go through a few places and see, see the videos and talk to people about the massive, massive crowds all over the place. And it was great. It was good for that to happen because, you know, people have to realize that voting is a commitment. And so when people show up for nomination, it's some level of commitment that they are showing to the candidate or candidates that they are going to cast that vote for. But I warn you, it don't necessarily mean that all of these people are going to show up on election day. And if these crowds are really your base, then... If that is your base, no matter how large the crowd was on nomination day, that alone, that can make a win. For, for every local government election candidate need to have a list of at least 2,500 people because con conventional wisdom is that it's going to be a low voter turnout. And local elections are usually a low voter turnout. I am not, so, usually in the 30s or so, I am not certain this is going to be the case. I'm not certain that we're going to have a really, really low voter turnout. I am more inclined to believe that it's going to be a little higher than it was the last two elections, um, local government election cycles. And so I decided to go and go through some place. And I started with Portmore. I went all the way to Portmore. And I, I even ventured into the 100-man police station um, to talk to two young youth who just became police about two years ago. And they are stationed there and um, to get their take. And why I went to talk to these two young youths? Because they have been friends for a long, long, long time since they were in primary school. And both of them signed up for the political, for the, um, the police force. Both of them went to training. Both of them are stationed at the same, same place. Why do I, why did I feel I need to go talk to them in particular? One of them is strong PMP, and one of them is a rabid JLP. The strangest thing about both of them, however, is that the PMP guy 
grew up in a mixed household with, both, with him father being labor right and him mother being PMP. The JLP guy grew up in a PMP community. There is nothing in his existence or his family background that suggests that he was influenced by anything because he grew up in a PMP community and basically a PMP household. And the man is a labor right? And he's like 24, 25. You know, both of them is about, about the same age. And I thought to myself yesterday morning that this would be an ideal pair of people to go talk to and get their take of what the nomination and what they believe um, is going to happen. So I started over in Portmore and I stopped there. That, that, the 100 man station was my second stop because I had to go and see some PMP people first for them to tell me what the situation is with workers. Because we have suspected for a long time and we have confirmed that the Portmore end is short of workers. The Portmore municipal, municipality is um, the Portmore PMP candidates. And, and, and I'm not, when I talk about workers, I have to be very specific to say that I'm talking about PMP workers because I don't know nothing about the JLP workers. But I'll talk, speak generally about the election things to include the JLP um, thing. But I don't know anything about the JLP work, 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 work work roster. But I know that the PMP have a workers issue, a very serious workers issue that have been plaguing the People's National Party for the last two years. And Mark Golden is the reason for this. The PMP has very, a very skeleton staff of PMP workers, a very skeleton roster of experienced, committed PMP workers, and that is as a direct result of Mark Golin and Peter Bunting antics that brought the party to this level. Workers don't feel inclusive into what Rise United Mark Golin is doing. Workers don't feel like they are appreciated the way that they usually are appreciated in PMP history. Workers are basically the backbone of the People's National Party, and they feel that workers like to feel like they have some kind of power. And they do, they have power, but that power was taken from them because the workers are also more, more like, more than, more often than that, the workers. And, 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 and when they feel that their power has been taken from them, they start to slump back. Forgive the noise in the background, you know, it's Saturday morning still. And they kind of step back. Plus, people don't like, people never like how the selection processes were going on lack of selection processes or when somebody is selected, then the Mark Golden and Peter Bunting and Dayton Campbell override that selection process and then put in who them want to put in. And workers who, who also happens to be delegates get frustrated by that. And they felt that nobody not listening to them. And I'm telling you, one of the hardest thing in politics and one of the things that really, really make people upset is when they feel that they are not being heard. People get upset and get agitated and get and get very um, animated about not being heard. And when you've been working a political, uh, say, a cluster or a PD for years, maybe even decades, and then suddenly you want John to be your candidate and the whole of you agree that John should be the candidate, but Mark Golden and Peter Bunting and Dayton Campbell decide that John not going to be the candidate because John not rising high enough. And that put a dent in the whole worker facade. The workers, them just got very lazy and laid back and them just feel like nobody not listen to them. And as a result of that feeling, there is a work sh worker shortage in, the, in, in Portmore, Portmore in general, right across the board. And I have not spoken to Raymond Price. I want to speak to Raymond Price. I want him to, I want him to tell me, I want to speak to Alric. I want him to, to, to tell me that this is not true or to point out to me that there are workers in particular places and there are workers that are shortage in particular places. But my understanding is that there is a severe worker shortage right across the country. There is a severe worker shortage. And when I say severe worker shortage, I mean workers who have been working for decades, work, workers, workers who have been managing and championing a particular PD for many, many moves. 
and Portmore is suffering from serious worker shortage. Now, why is this important? Because, I mean, if, if, if you're a candidate and you want to find an indoor agent, lots of people will sign up once they are political, slightly political, or even medi mediocre political, and they hear what money they get to be an indoor, indoor agent, they're going to sign up for it because it's the electoral office that pays the indoor agent. And people are going to sign up for it to get that pay. An indoor agent is like the brain of the operation on, on, on election day. The indoor agent is a brain of the operation on election day. The indoor agent has to be an experienced indoor agent who knows the laws, electoral laws, and understand how the process works inside the polling station. An indoor agent who is respectful of the process, respectful of the electoral office um, apparatus, but also very strong and firm in defending her candidate, is or her candidate, or is or her party. So an indoor agent is like the brain of election day operations. An indoor agent also can tell you, um, is a person who can tell you every hour how many PMP voters have already voted. So there are two things that are crucial to having an experienced and solid indoor agent. One, that indoor agent must have an intimate knowledge of the PMP voters list that the candidate has, or the GLP voters list that the candidate has. There are 2,500 people. And when that person come to vote, the indoor agent must be box shuffling and ifing and butting about who that person is or who that voter is. Otherwise, he or she cannot pro provide you with the correct information as to who, who or she voted and how many people voted. So the indoor agent has to be a part of the whole political apparatus, the whole operation outside of election day before she or he can be placed inside the operation on election day. It's like sending in SEAL Team 6 to go kill Os Osama Bin Laden and wait to attack a stop. SEAL Team 6 don't know nothing about Afghanistan. SEAL Team 6 don't know nothing about the hills and mountains of Af Afghanistan. And SEAL Team 6 just know how to basically fire a gun. Them don't have a picture of, of, of Bin, Bin Laden. I mean, SEAL Team 6 that killed Bin Laden would not be able to kill Bin Laden without the training they had about everything about him. Because Bin Laden, of course, had many doubles. So in, before they killed him, they took a picture of him. Before they killed him, they, they identified, definitely identified him. 100% that is him. How did that happen? Training, involvement in the pursuit of Bin Laden. And if they were not involved in the pursuit of Bin Laden and trained about and knew everything about Bin Laden, they would not be able to track him. They would not be able to go in there and kill him. They probably could have killed somebody else without knowing that. So there you go with your indoor agent. And what I'm seeing, Portmore in particular, what I, what I confirmed yesterday, because we were getting these reports for about two years ago, we are getting these reports. So workers are a problem. Everybody said they now work. The council that died was one of those who told us that workers is a problem. I have never spoken to, to the council that died, Ainsley Parkinson, I think his name was. I have never spoken to him. But he has had many conversations with many leaders in the resistance who then pass on the information to me to say that workers are a problem. They have no workers. They have about 25 to 30 percent of workers in Portmore. So now that the elections have been announced, what are they going to do? Round up some people, name them indoor agent, name them outdoor agent. Your outdoor agents. So the, no, let me finish with the indoor agent. So the indoor agent is basically the brain of the operation, who knows the laws, know the, the, the election laws, who knows the processes, who, who knows the in and out of how you operate inside the, the polling station to ensure that there is fairness for your side because the other candidate indoor agent is also ensuring that fairness on the inside and both of you basically um, are there for the same thing for, for your opposite candidate. So that is the first problem that the People's National Party face in Portmore. Workers, good, solid, experienced workers. And everybody is going to turn up and say, let me know what to do. And no matter how much training 
the trainers in the People's National Party give to the people who say the first time I work as Hindu or the work last time or the work the year before. And that's the next thing. Nobody knows. Nobody knows who. Nobody nobody can. Oh, they are by them. Nobody can, can say there, there are going to be instances when a counselor or, 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 a, or a key party person can stand up and say, is John worth this, this, this cluster? Is John worth this PD every year? I said, John here. Yeah? But lots of people are going to show up. And lots of people are going to say, I, and, and because you are rice candidates, you want to choose rice, rise people to go represent you in the polling station. I mean, this thing is a royal mess in Port World. Because I don't know how they're going to work that out. Huh? So apart from the fact that them have other external issues, like the guy. I'm glad to see that a new candidate was um, selected um, and, uh, and to replace the drug dealer, the one where them, where them call him Omar something of his not. Forgive me, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go look up his name before I, I started this, 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 this voice note. Um, but there was this guy. His name is um, Omar Ebanks. That's right. Ebanks is his name. Um, I'm not sure about the first name, but the, the second name is Ebanks. And here's what happened with him. He wanted to be the candidate for the for, 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 for the division, and um, that uh, I, I I I never knew I was going to talk about him. I would have got the information that I needed before I started the voice note. But he wanted to be a candidate for one of those divisions. Please forgive me for that. That I don't have that information to share with you. And I believe there was a selection process. Or either that or majority of the delegates of that division stated very clearly who they wanted to be their representative. And my understanding is that what the delegates decided and Bunting, the supreme leader, the leader of the leader, stepped in. Mark Golden is leader, Bunting is leader of the leader. So him is the supreme leader because his theme rise party. He just have the seat for lead it. So I put Mark G for lead for him, while him is in a much much better and stronger position because him can strong arm everybody from the in the background and get whoever him want to put in. So I understand that Bunting was the one who said him don't want that guy. Him wanted to go to Ibax. And when we heard that, we decided to look into Ibax. And of course, everybody know that he went to to prison in the United States for for drugs. He's not the only young fellow in this country who try a thing and, 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 and got caught for it. A lot of young people in this country did that. You know, a lot of people, young and old, do that. So I'm not beating him up for the fact that he did that. He did go carry some drugs. I can't. I'm being realistic about it all. It's a bad thing. All right? But having done that and having gotten caught and having served some time in prison for it, what made you believe that you could come back to this country from out of prison in the United States and want to represent people. Those are things you stay away from because in the political climate, people are going to talk about it. People are going to, it going to surface and people are going to remember and it's going to sully up not only you who are already solid, but it's going to damage the brand that you want to represent. And Bunting, being a former minister of national security, must have known this. He must have known this about this young fellow. But this young fellow is a part of his original team of people that they call the engineers. And I promise you on my last live that I'm going to talk about this young fellow and what Maureen Weber have been doing um, in support of this young fellow. But this young fellow went on a, on a YouTube channel program and I believe um, he was talking about his, his, his own his own um, his own candidacy and why he left and all of that. And him talk about a portion of things and I'm going to talk about those things and, and, and this note. I'm going to talk about it in the live so I can tell you what transpired. The next live I'm going to tell you about, about that. But there's this young fellow and all of it came out and then... My sister have some church sisters that live in Portmore. And it's one of them I stopped by um, yesterday morning to get me a cup of tea. And 
her neighbor was saying to me that they are one, some of the persons that told Raymond Price not to walk with this guy. If they walk with him, then that will support him, Raymond Price. So Raymond Price have to ditch him. You know, and I don't even know what the hell got into Raymond Price. Like him never go get information. I know him never walk up and down. With no rise as them tainted, blood up on them hands. They are wicked and conscionable people. They have taken over the PNP and have turned the PNP into a treacherous, wicked organization. You can't walk up and down with them. You can't trust them. So when people tell me that, listen, election call now. Don't go out there go beat up Mark Golden. Me could, me could just try and win. And me could just do this. Me could address those things on the next live too as well. I, I'm going to address that to you. But I'm saying to you that this guy, they actually put him forward knowing what they knew. Because nobody can tell nobody that they did not know. Bunting into everybody's life. Bunting's time as a minister of national security was spent building files on people that he considered to be his enemies and, and recruiting and building files on people that he wanted to support him to take over PMP and then be prime minister of Jamaica. That is what all his time as minister of national security was spent doing, doing payback. Building files to lock up people, to disgrace people, to expose people, to tell lie on people, to, to, to put people's story out there with the laws. And he used, he abused his power as a, as a sacred um, appointment of a minister of national security, which is supposed to look after the national interests of the country. But he used that time, used that time, Peter Murkoff Bunting, used all that time to build files on his enemies, to make an enemies list, kind of like Richard Nixon kind of thing that he did. So that caused a stir, and I believe last weekend they removed the young fellow and um, replaced him um, with, another, with another young fellow. I was so fortunate to buck up on um, some, jail, some JLP people um, in the Portmore area, putting up the, the thing for this nice young lady. I don't remember her name. But she's a nice young lady um, going to be running, um, I think, in Westchester, I believe. Um, she's going to um, run in. And um, I was not doing no video in and stuff. They, they were the ones who called me. They were the ones who recognized me. I, never, I wasn't really going over there. But they were the ones who called me and I go over there and I talked to them. And they were saying that, you know, they're confident and things. And, and I said to them, but poor more look like it going back to the PMP. And then the boy carried, you know, so you're fear and nice what that tell us, you're wrong the time, you're wrong the time. And uh, well, I left with that. I'm going to talk about that some more, but not on this. Uh, maybe later, but you know, there, but the thing. So I traverse around Portmore and every look a corner, look a shop, them with the PMP people them sell, they look a man where I walk around and sell him grabber, um, um, stop on some PMP yard. And here's another, another interesting thing. I stopped at a big PMP yard with about four PMP yard on either, either side of that PMP yard. So maybe it's a whole block of PMP yard. But I just know this PMP woman, so I wanted to talk to her. Why did I want to talk to her? One of the reports that we got when um, other members of the leadership of the resistance was engaging the Portmore candidates, um, including Comrade Ainsley, one of the reports that we got was that there were PMP mothers. And we, this report is not only from Portmore. I want you to listen to me. What I'm about to say is not only from Portmore, it's right across the country. One of the reports I got was that there were mothers and some fathers who are threatening their children that if they go work for P the PMP candidates, they're going to put them out of the house. I want you to listen to me. You know. PMP mothers and PMP fathers are threatening them PMP children that if them go work for PMP and they what they, they told them that because some of them are either outdoor agents or runners and um, indoor agents and, and whatever job they have on, on the day of the election. And yeah, the mothers are threatening them PMP. When we go, go work for PMP, that's what we do them. Now, I can't relate to that really because my yard is full of PMP people and PMP picnic. And um, I don't believe I would threaten anyone of them to put them out if them go work for the PMP. But 
thank God I won't have to find out if I would do that because um, my niece Francine is in charge of my mother's cluster now and um, and and them have, and she have to do the work for Patrick Roberts and, and, them, and everybody have to go, go vote for Patrick Roberts and I, and I don't have to tell nobody that but I, 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 but I thought about it I thought about it last night when I was having a discussion um, I, I thought about it and I said I wonder if um, if the tables were turned and the, 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 they have replaced Patrick with a riser candidate what would I have done? And I have no doubt in my mind, I tell everybody to pop them back, say, back, if they ever go out there, go work for that riser candidate or vote for him, they must have to leave out of Miss Audrey Yard. They would have to leave out of Miss Audrey Yard so I can empathize with the mothers in an hypothetical situation. As it is now, because I'm not in that position, I don't know what to make of it. I really don't. Except to say that mothers and fathers are telling their children, don't go work for the Monday. Don't go vote for the Monday. PMP mothers are telling them PMP children, uno can't be put them out. I you know then the mothers and I run a joke with them. Then we put them out. I don't know if you remember when I told you that during the internal presidential election done by Michael, when this young fellow attacked his mother, cut off his mother in the worst kind of way. It was disturbing. Because the young fellow was supposed to cause their mother them weird. But he was so upset that his mother went and gave her vote for, to Mark Golding for fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. And instead, never thought about giving her vote to Lisa Hannah because she thought that the vote that she had to make that choice was her own. And the young fellow who should work hard to send to send to school said that she was voting as if she thinks she should vote in for herself. And we're gonna talk about that too. Because he was saying that when you make that vote, make him make that choice for somebody to represent you, don't make it as if it's just your personal choice. Voting is a right. Voting is also a privilege. But voting also shows that you have a commitment, a commitment to yourself, a commitment to your, to your, to your family, a commitment to your, to, your, to your communities, a community to one another, a commitment to your country, and a commitment to the world. Because voting, free and fair voting, is an expression, is one of the solidest form of democracy. And it's an expression of your own support for democracy. So when you do it in your own division and in your own constituency, you are also doing it for the country. And you're doing it for the world. And you're doing it for your family. Which is so darn important that you make a good choice and don't vote with your, with, don't vote with your, with, with, with too much emotions. I mean, voting is an emotional act, um, act, but it's also an intellectual act. Voting is also an intellectual act as much as much as an as an, as, a, as, a, as an emotional one. You can vote from a party. Stop that foolishness. Stop that foolishness. Where you can vote for your party, vote for yourselves, vote for your country. Vote for your community. Vote for your children, your grandchildren. Vote for your country. Vote for the world. Make your vote count. Not because some idiot is there to say that he might represent you. You have no, no commitment. You have no, 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 no. You, you don't have to. You don't have to. If he's not the right person, if she's not the right person, you don't have to. My vote for, I have had issues with Patrick Roberts. And my vote for him will be for two reasons and two reasons only. He shows up. He shows up. He's here constantly. You know something, I think like him, like him, like him I have nothing to do. And it seemed to me that he hung out of, at other places and him like him do the rounds in the evenings and go to various other places and he's here so him end it at the bingo table, sit down on the bench them that him buy, but um, some of the, 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 the concrete benches that him buy, but the ones them that me build, and the palm tree them that me plant, and him sit down out there till hours a night, and everybody can come, come sit down and hang out with him. So he shows up. So that's one of my reasons that why I'm going to vote for him. The other reason is a simple one. No matter what, no matter what you face with him, no matter how much you cuss him 
and quarrel with him. He take it in strides. And at the end of it, he say, me know, me, me know, me know. I'm going to do better. And uh, me know now have my back. I'm going have the back too. So there's a little bit of humility about him. It, it wasn't always like that. If he was responsible, if Patrick Roberts was ever responsible for the collection of my garbage and me not getting my garbage collected, he would not be getting my vote. He would not be getting my vote. But my, collect, my garbage collection is the most important thing to me in terms of what the civic responsibilities of my elected representatives are. And I hold Mr. Holness accountable for that. And Mr. Holness have been excellent in terms of my garbage collection. So I have nothing bad to say about him. So anytime I can't get my garbage collected, then me and Mr. Holness will have a problem. But me and have a problem because my garbage is collected. And him send on a whole heap of blue drum come give everybody. So everybody have a drum plus a next drum. And everybody can put them garbage in it and store them garbage properly until the garbage truck comes. And it comes two, three times a week. And that explains my vote for Patrick Roberts. So I'm saying to you that people in Portmore and across the country are telling their children who used to work for PMP and run up and down for PMP that if they're going to do that, they're going to put them out. And that is a sad state of affair. So I, I peruse around Portmore a little bit. I was in Portmore for a good while. Car even um, broke down a little bit and stuff, but I peruse in Portmore still. And I left Portmore and decided that I am going to drive the highway and go through Southwest St. Andrew, Angela Bromberg constituency. And let me tell you what I am looking for, why I decided from long time years ago that when nomination is over, I'm going to go up on the road because I want one. The road was kind of quiet. Um, the, the look at orange flag and green flags are still about. But what I am particularly looking for is to see how many PNP people and how many GLP people still have on them colors after nomination day. That I'm looking for in particular. I know some people have to go work, but I'm looking for it. And here's where I'm going to find it. I want to find it to the people them who have different jobs. The jobs of coming out in the morning and sweep up and wet up and clean up the place where them play the bingo or the place where them gamble or the place where them sit down and, and drink until gambling ready. And them come out and them wet it up and them sweep up and everybody hang out and then go buy breakfast and everybody a jive and stuff. So those people should still have on them church. Or come back out and them shirt based on whatever little money them get yesterday or whatever their enthusiasm is about their candidate and their candidate's chances of winning the next local government election. So I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that. And wherever you see that, it gives you get an indication of where people's mindset is. And you and you can always start a conversation with somebody in a colours. So, you know, coming through Southwest. Um, St. Andrew, there were one and two people in them orange. There were one or two people. I don't stop. I just drive and look and saw one or two people walking in them, in them, in them orange. Coming up Waltham Park Road, one man on a bicycle, fully orange clad. Fully orange clad. Him at him. Him have, him have a, you that thing, Jamaica, cool like I, because him have a one who stays around him neck, shawl. And him have on him, him orange shirt, and him have on one pants with an orange thing swan on it, and him and him and him bicycle have one piece of orange cloth tie on it, and I stopped, and I pull over, and I stop him, and I said, "What, my come, my brother?" And he's a Karen Cross. <laughs> what happened to you? Where are you, sir? Give me something, huh? and we talk, and I ask him, and I said to him. You know, sir, it's a good sign for PMP in an area when you wake up in the morning and see PMP people and them orange. It's a very good sign. And him say, 
Yeah, man, I'm not to come this to the lake side. Right up to the lake side, I get up in the morning, I'm going to change my shirt. And he reminded me. The memory came back. Memories just keep came back to me, flooding of, of Jacko. And I tell you, I miss Jacko. I miss Jacko nomination date. I don't know what to do with myself. I miss Jacko every day. I'm not kidding you. I miss Jacko. And yesterday, when he said that to me, and the way I talk about it, and him have the dragon in him, and I miss Jacko. Because Jacko would be the one who wake up yesterday morning with him run back in his back pocket. And if it and if it's soon done, he would have come to me about refilling it for him. And we have him cup. And we type him Edward Orange Cart and him that have on whatever PMP t shirt he have. And he wouldn't have on just Patrick Roberts t shirt. He would have a Patrick Roberts t shirt nomination day. The next morning, he'd probably see him with that with another T-shirt from a candidate from somewhere else because Jacko walk and collect PMP T-shirts. And I miss Jacko. I miss that excitement and I miss that noise. That noise will be continuing up to this morning. I probably don't forget about telling him to go and go sleep or stop him damn noise at the community. But I miss Jacko. And I spoke to that comrade. And I felt good about speaking to him. I felt really, really good. And I'm telling you this, comrades. I'm telling you this with all the sincerity of my heart, I am telling you this. Driving by immediately was some Jamaica Labour Party supporters. They weren't in any green or anything. They weren't in them green. It just see me. And the guys stopped. And said, my favorite YouTuber. We YouTube. I'm sad saying, we YouTubing. We YouTubing. And that was funny. Yeah, we YouTubing. And I left my PMP guy. I said, give me two minutes, man. And I spoke to him. I'm not living in the area. I drive my drive through. I go, so, then I go somewhere. I drive my through. And talk about him party. And talk about how they're going to win. And talk about things, you know, where him see, you know, liberalism did nice yesterday. And him talk about all of that. And he was enthusiastic. He's going to vote for um, Joy Cottrell, he said. He, he's going to vote for her. I think that's what he said. And the other young fellow was saying something else, but he, the one I was talking to, that was singing the YouTube and thing, him saying he was going to vote for Jaya Cottrell, and that's basically a safe PMP, um, GLPC, I, I, I would imagine, some stuff. So there is, and I used those two, and while I went other places, I went other places. I did. I wanted to go to Central Kingston, and I'm going to go to Central Kingston, because Central Kingston, I'm going to go over. But I drove up, and I went many places. I go over Marvelly, there were still one and two people in them PMP shirt, there was still one or two people in them green shirt in Marvelly, yeah. I went round to the UN then, there was still one or two people in them shirt. I went I went up and then I went up to Red Hills to see where Mr. Samuda people them um stand and stuff. And uh check me people them at hundred lane and find out who I go on and everybody everybody at the corner there so of 100 lane and some places. Everybody was still having on some semblance of green and, and, and there were some one or two people scattered around and thing and I'm talking about. I took the opportunity to ask a couple of the labor rights um, up that end um, about Mr. Sama, Samuda's um, imminent departure because I got um, some information that he, he's, he's leaving and um, them can't seem to settle on, on, on who them want. I'm going up there to talk back to them some other time to, to see where their headspace is in terms of who should replace Mr. Mr. Samuda. I'm going back up there to talk to them. I promise them that I'm having something that I want them to come buy a drink and uh, I'll go early in the day and pay for the drink. <laughs> so, um, um, so I'm going to go back up there and talk to them about that. Because it's important to get their take and who their next representative is going to be or who they think the person should be. I didn't want to ask them because I don't have a full list of who the people are who are interested in the seat. <clears throat> so I couldn't ask them that. So I would have a, a full list of people who are interested in the seat. Then I'll go up there and I'll, and I'll ask them how they feel about that and who they want to, to use. So I went to and I got a little bit of vibes. And here is what I have concluded. I've concluded that there is there is enthusiasm on both sides. There is enthusiasm on the side of the JLP. And the JLP people keep saying 
and expressing their enthusiasm in a way that says that they are confident that this person and that person are going to remain. And they, and they pivot. The, the GLP people tend, tends to pivot from their local candidate and straight into, into Mr. Oldness, um remaining their leader and remaining prime minister and doing it for him. Huh? The one or two PMP people that I spoke to um, don't have that. And um, nobody not telling me that them 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 want Mark Golden to win or them want Mark, even though they make a song for Mark Golden. And it appears that the PMP is still using Mark Golden as some kind of catalyst or some kind of um some kind of motivation to get people out to vote. Now I wouldn't be able to I can't even begin to tell them how wrong up them is about that. But I will leave them, them uh, let them to them devices, let them go do what they want to do. Voter enthusiasm is always lines up with whatever the poll numbers are saying about whether the country is on the right track or the wrong track. That right track, wrong track poll is always a good indicator of where the electorate is or where the country is in general because um, it, it's about people feeling good about themselves and their own economic um, circumstance and their, and their own circumstances. Yeah. Um, there might be one or two people that talk about their own personal thing not going so well. But if the right track, wrong track, wrong track poll say um, is is in the positive, then that the voter and that, that will translate into voter enthusiasm for the governing party and um, not so much for the opposition. So that depends on where the wrong track, right track poll is. But there is some enthusiasm on the side of the PMP. And I want to say something about that a little bit. I don't know if that enthusiasm is um ah boy, I don't know. I don't want to use the word real. And let me let me tell you what I'm looking for. Cause maybe you can help me to, to, to put it together. Cause you know, you know, we don't we never learn a lot of big school big word in, in basic schools. So I mean, look for example at the at the big PMP crowd down a Warmington constituency. And look at that crowd. Look at that massive PMP crowd down by Warmington constituency. And I look at it and I say, but if Warmington was running back, Warmington is going to beat Kurt Wall. Who Mark Golden said, I'm going to build a wall, all that. But that was Kurt Wall beat, beating Warmington. He can't beat Warmington. Under no circumstances, he could beat Warmington. Warmington and, and I'm not talking about from an emotional point of view. I'm talking about numbers. The PMP don't have the numbers for Wall to beat Warmington. And if Warmington not running back, the PMP still don't have the numbers to beat the person who's going to replace Warmington unless that person is worse than, and black discal and, and don't have no personality and don't know if to talk. I mean, that person would have to have a, a whole heap of flaws for, for Kurt Wall to beat whoever that person is in Warmington constituency. I look around the country and see a massive amount of crowd in many, many constituencies, that massive amount of PMP crowd in many constituencies where, where there are JLP MPs and some where there are JLP MPs that will not be unseated. I look at Mario Mitchell and him little crowd moving and I'm not so sure Mario Mitchell is going to win him seat. And I'm not talking this from a, from a point of view that Mario Mitchell is a um, bunting boy, is, is, is bunting um, handbag, kind of a little, um, um, what I'm what soldiers, although them the man they are coward, but you have to use soldiers with them the man they name in the same time. You can't use soldier with, with name like Mario, Mario, <laughs> Mario Michel, because them man they are weakling. But about what about bunting boy? And you look at him, look a crowd, and You'd think that for a councillor, for a guy who's been there as a councillor for a hell of a long time, um, that crowd will look a little bit more enthusiastic. But they were not enthusiastic. They might follow him, my the councillor. Him run the work, these are the people who get the money. Him run whatever thing, these are the people him visit, these are the people him go to nine night and dead yard. These are they. There are no more than that. And I have doubts about him winning back him seats, him seat. And I can, and I, and, and that is about numbers. That is not so much about enthusiasm. And I'm telling you, enthusiasm is the most important thing in terms of getting your voters out. But getting who out? 
Do you have the numbers? Do you have a list to get them out? So if you have an enthusiasm, 10%, you can get them out. But if you need an enthusiasm, 70%, 80% to get them out. So I don't know. I'm just skeptical about it all. You know? I look around and I look at every place that the PMP don't have a member of parliament. And how massive those crowds were. Big. Huge. Jamaica people used to say big, 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 big. People, Jamaica people love to say that. A big, big this. My big, big police. My big, big JP. My big, big this. My big, big MP. My big, big councillor. But I mean, these crowds were huge. Now I take with that from, from, from the Mark Golden and the crew. They mobilized. They organized. Them not give the authentic PMP councillors and council candidates the money. Them give money to them rise candidates. And not even that going to save them. That they gave the money to the rice candidates. And that now a sea of them. That can't save them. Because they gave the money to people who are running in divisions. That people don't want them. The, P the voters don't want them. The PMP voters don't want them. The PMP voters now work for them. Now vote for them. And the PMP voters are in a position now where they are clearing their heads. That not because he's having an orange shirt, not because it's his name on the ballot beside the PMP head, that doesn't mean you have to vote for him. It don't mean that. Because PMP people, not those who did not get the candidate of their choice, now know, now know that their, their responsibility as a voter, that that vote is not their own exclusive vote, that their, that vote belongs to them and them children and them grandchildren and them community and them wider party, and the country, and the world. But our voting public is still somewhat ignorant. I don't have to get with it, people. I don't have to stop. So now, I ask a question of both parties, and I'm asking this of the PNP, and I'm asking this of the JLP. What is the strategy? What is the strategy to bring out your vote? Are your voters enthusiastic to come out and vote for their candidate? Are they? Are they pumped? Are they hyped? And I ask about the strategy because the essence of any political strategy, the essence of any political strategy must be, must be the ability to foretell what is going to happen next week? What is going to happen next month? What is going to happen on the 24th? What is going to happen on the 25th? What is going to happen on the 26th? And then you must have the ability to explain it if it fails. So if you don't have a strategy for that, then I don't know how we're going to plan and talk about time come. It is clear. It is clear that most PMP voters recognize that their first duty, their very first duty, as Osemati, I think it's Osemati who said it, that the first duty of a man is to think for himself. And I think we have educated enough, the PMP people, for them to understand that you just can't vote for some people. You don't have to. You have no obligation to. You know, must do it. You know, must go to go vote. You know, must go to go vote. You know, must go vote for no candidate. Unless it's a candidate that you help to choose. Unless it's a candidate that the people say, this is the person we want. Like in the case of St. James. There are, I understand, after I, in my life, some people um, called me and said there were one or two people that were actually selected by the delegates. I don't get that listed. Soon as I get it, I will clarify it. And I will correct that. But a majority of them was not selected by the people. They were installed. And they were installed as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a reward for being risers. It's just a reward for rising. And because you were rising and you want to run, yeah, go on, go run. Go on, go run. Because you are rise and you're supporting the rise boss. And you're supporting Marky G. So go on, go run. Elections are about the people. 
elections belong to the people. And it's only the people can decide how this one is going to end. Only the people and you, the Jamaican voters, need to understand. I think Abraham Lincoln once said that you can't change us in the middle of a stream. Now, I don't exactly agree with Abraham Lincoln that you can't change horse, horses in the middle of a stream because, you know, boy, all horses, they might just drown. I think, and maybe that's what Lincoln was trying to say, that if you attempt to change the horse in the middle of maybe a deep stream, in a shallow stream, yes, but maybe a deep stream, all of them are going to drown. Or you are going to drown or something like that. So I don't exactly agree with what Abraham Lincoln said, that you can't change horses in the middle of the stream. Here's what I believe. I believe that you have a responsibility to look at the candidates, to look at the people who are asking you know, to vote for them. And you have a responsibility not only to yourself, but to your family and your neighbors and your community and your country. You have that responsibility to think for yourself and to ask yourself, who is this man? Who is this woman? Yes, me is a member of this party. I am a member of the PMP. And because I'm a member of the PMP and him is voting for the PMP, I have a responsibility to go vote for him. No, you don't have that responsibility. Your responsibility is to decide your mind if he is worthy of your vote. Your responsibility is to decide your mind if he got there in the right way. Did the people choose him? Is he a good person? Did Bunting choose him? Did Mark choose him? Did Dayton Campbell choose him? Who chose him? Was it the people that chose him? Were you a part of that people that chose him? And those are the decisions you have to make as to whether or not you want to cast that vote for this man or for this woman. And you have to look at the integrity of these people. And you, the Jamaican voters, I want to close this voice note by saying to you, and I know some of you not will like it, but this is a fact and this is a truth. You have a history, you the Jamaican voters, you have a history of voting for people who are not worthy. They're not worthy of your vote. And you have a history also of trying to save people save political leaders from certain oblivion. And some of you PMP people, I know some of you would like to save Mark Golden, but you can't save him. You can't save him. Nobody could save Judas. If he never go hang himself, somebody would have killed him. Nobody can save a traitor. Nobody can save a Judas. You can't save him. So you have no obligation to vote for the candidates that he has forced upon you. If you never elect and select that candidate, you have no obligation to vote for that person. But if it's your candidate that you chose and you feel that this is a good candidate and you feel that your community and your family and your country will be better off with this candidate, then by all means, vote and vote. Exercise that franchise that many of our four parents did not have and exercise that right. But know this. Know this in your head, you, the Jamaican voters. This, on the 26th of February in 2024, this is your choice. This is your power. The only person that can make this happen is you. And it's about time that you, the Jamaican voters, get up and recognize that voting is not only a right, it is a privilege and an exercise of your ultimate power. None of them would have a job without you. None of them would have a job to boast of themselves, but my MP and my minister, unless you give them that job. So on February 26th, you are going to do an interview. You are now doing interviews. You are now doing interviews to see who is worthy. And on February 26th, 2024, you are going to make that decision as to who should get the job. Choose wisely, I beg you. Choose wisely, I plead with you. Choose wisely. God bless you. Thank you all for listening to me rant again. Have a great, great day, everyone. God bless you all. Stay safe.
keep the children safe. Thank you.